In case you were unaware, the Airbus A220 has been having a pretty rough time staying out of the hangar and in the air where it belongs. Yes, we can be grateful that it has thus far managed to avoid the same levels of bad publicity and disaster as the Boeing 737 MAX, but A220 operators around the world are most definitely experiencing challenges with the type. This has very little to do with the avionics and airframe design and is pretty much all about the engines powering the jet, the Pratt & Whitney PW1500G geared turbofan engine. So this prompts us to ask the question, should the Airbus A220 get a second engine option? Is something like the already developed CFM Leap even an option? Let's try to answer these questions for today's video. First, a little bit of background on the problem and why it's even worth asking about another A220 engine option. It's actually a few things. Firstly, the Pratt & Whitney engines are needing to be serviced far earlier than they were originally designed for. As early as 2019, Pratt & Whitney was reducing the life limits on these PW1500G geared turbofan engines after finding excessive corrosion during a routine overhaul. The engines have been plagued by a contaminated powder metal issue which can cause cracks. Quoting the FAA, an airworthiness directive was, quote, prompted by corrosion found on the high-pressure compressor or HPC front hub, which could result in certain HPC front hubs cracking before reaching their published life limit. This condition, if not addressed, could result in uncontained HPC front hub release, damage to the engine, and damage to the airplane. Making this problem worse is that Pratt & Whitney has also fallen victim to supply chain issues and has been having a difficult time getting replacement components delivered to airlines with affected aircraft. In a statement, Martin Gauss, president and CEO of Air Baltic, stated that the extended turnaround times for Pratt & Whitney servicing the engines are causing operational disruption for Air Baltic. They, as a long-term partner of Air Baltic, could not keep the given promise again on the improved turnaround times. This has forced Air Baltic to wet lease aircraft to carry out its flight schedules, much to the dismay of passengers hoping to step on board the carrier's A220s. As of 2025, the problem is so bad for the all-A220-300 airline that it had to cancel thousands of flights for the coming summer season. 19 routes have been suspended, with frequencies cut to another 21 destinations. In total, 4,670 flights will not operate as planned. Indeed, a whole video could be made on the huge impact these engine issues are having on A220 operators, but that's not the point of this particular piece. Nonetheless, this background information demonstrates the risk of tying an aircraft to a single engine option. Having a single-engine option could go relatively well, as in the case of the Boeing 737 Classic and NG series being exclusively powered by the CFM-56, as well as the 737 MAX being tied to the CFM Leap 1B. The A350 and A330neo have fared quite well with their respective Rolls-Royce power plants as well. It could also be a toss-up in the case of multiple-engine options. A320 NEO family operators who chose the Pratt & Whitney geared turbofan option instead of the CFM Leap 1A are struggling right now. It was probably a similar feeling of regret for Rolls-Royce Trent 1000-powered 787 operators a few years ago. While their Dreamliners were grounded, other 787 operators were able to fly with their General Electric GE NX engines. And so, is it time for Airbus to consider certifying the A220 with another engine option? It wouldn't provide any relief for current A220 operators, but it could make the jet more appealing in the long run. When it comes to potential engines for this newer generation of aircraft, it would seem that the CFM Leap comes the closest in being that mythical alternative. Of course, the variants already developed by CFM are for aircraft that are larger than the A220. The CFM Leap variant that appears to be the closest fit is the Leap 1B. Considering the A220's height, you would need to have a fan diameter equal or less than the PW1500G, which is stated to be 73 inches. Conveniently, the CFM Leap 1B has a fan diameter of 69 inches. 
But while Leap 1B dimensions are similar to the PW1500G, weight and thrust are quite different. The former is about 30% heavier than the latter. Maximum thrust is a few thousand pound force higher as well. This might be okay for the A22300, which is a little smaller than the 737 MAX, but clearly overkill for the tiny A22100. We won't get too deep into the technical performance ramifications, but it's safe to say that the A220 would behave very differently if it had 737 MAX engines mounted under its wings. Just to be sure, we actually went through the trouble of asking CFM about the hypothetical situation of Leap engines powering the A220. They politely responded to our inquiry, saying, We don't disclose the details of discussions with our airframe customers about future engines and aircraft applications. But yes, one would have to assume that CFM would need to spend time developing a Leap variant specifically for the A220 family, rather than install something already made. And so, developing this new engine, even if it's a variation of an existing engine family, may not be economically feasible given the smaller market for the A220. Indeed, Airbus would have to think carefully about whether or not development costs would result in enough orders to make it all worth it, whether for brand new jets or re-engining existing aircraft. The latter is far-fetched, but not exactly unheard of, in fact, we've seen re-engining programs take place before, as the CFM-56 was chosen by several airlines to re-engine old Douglas DC-8s. The US Air Force selected the same power plant to re-engine KC-135 Stratotankers, but it's extremely doubtful that any carriers would want to invest in something similar for their A220s, even if their Pratt & Whitney engines are causing massive headaches at the moment. But this leads us to another interesting possibility, using the CFM Leap for a future A220 variant. And on this note, we actually have some real-world news to discuss. In June 2023 at the Paris Air Show, the Air Current had the opportunity to speak with Larry Kolb, the CEO of GE Aerospace. The executive stated that his company was open to having an engine offering through its CFM joint venture on a notional 170-seat A220-500. In fact, the Air Current says it was something the company was actively considering. Culp was quoted as saying at the time, I don't think we would, at this point, rule anything in or anything out. I think all options are on the table. Unfortunately, we haven't heard any more news on this topic since the short blurb published by the Air Current, although the possibility of an A22500 seems inevitable. The question is when. According to Leeham News, Airbus is seeking to drive demand in the A220 program and will consider a stretched A22500 model once production reaches 14 units per month, something that won't happen until at least 2026. And so, if it could come without much added cost and time, we're sure some airlines would happily trade their defective Pratt & Whitney engines for a more reliable alternative. But extensive costs and long timelines are sadly normal for almost anything in the aerospace industry. But what do you think about existing A220 variants like the Dash 100 and Dash 300 getting a second engine option? Let us know by leaving a comment. Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.